Mr. Uh, Michaelis, what is it the defendant has arrived? What is it that we need to discuss before I bring the jury out? First, I want to put the court on notice that I'm a little bit uh, uh, worried about a witness we listed, Robert Dunleavy. From, since the trial began, I made it clear to him that I can't estimate completely accurately when he needed to testify, but I estimated it would be probably the 16th, possibly the 15th of November. When we were done on jury selection week at some point, I went to my office, he was calling all day long saying that he had a doctor's appointment on the 17th and he needed more assurance from me. So I called him back and I told him, look, I don't see it going the 17th, but in the abundance of caution, but I think it was set for the 16th. I said, in the abundance of caution, why don't you cancel that doctor's appointment, set it another day because probably we might need you the 16th. Uh, he followed up later on, and this is all by voicemail too, and talking to uh, legal assistants saying that he, that, that he had a subsequent uh, message saying that he canceled the doctor's appointment, but he didn't know exactly when he needed to be here. And he seemed alarmed and, and uh, agitated. So I called him back, couldn't reach him, left him a nice voicemail and said, look, as I told you from day one, I can't estimate completely when I'll need you, but this is pretty much what it's going to be. Uh, but I haven't talked to him now. I haven't actually talked to him directly on the phone for a few days. I've left voicemails. The last voicemail he left was, he got my voicemail, that's fine, but his mother-in-law is ill, she's pa she might pass away. So I'm not sure what that means, but then I'm really concerned because I even tried it from my home line this morning. I'm not getting a voicemail now. I'm not getting an answer. I've let my investigator know. He's going to try to make contact with him, hopefully soon, but um, I, I'd like guidance for the court, perhaps. I have his address. If we could do an order of show cause, bring him here and give him an exact date and time when he'll be needed, that'd be great, but I just want to bring it to the court's attention because I am definitely concerned, Your Honor. Okay. Well, I don't know what to tell you. Um, at this point, he doesn't sound like he's not being cooperative. Um, if you have served him with a subpoena, um, if you wish to have him come in today or tomorrow, um, I'm happy to address on that. I'll be happy to do that, but I, I don't know what to tell you. This is, you know, this is the way big trials go. State has the same issues. They had people here yesterday that weren't, we weren't able to put on. Now they have to make him come back tomorrow. I can't, you can't do an order to show cause because he hasn't refused your subpoena or refused to come in. So I don't know how you're going to do an order to show cause, but if you'd like to tell him that he needs to come in tomorrow morning, I mean, I assume you gave him a subpoena that covers the entire time frame. I did, I did, Your Honor. All right, well, have your investigator, if you want to read that subpoena and have him come in tomorrow with a specific date, you can have him come in and I'll tell him, you better be here when we tell him to be here or he's going to be in and out of jail. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Awaiting his testimony until he testifies and then I can replace him. Okay, thank you for Judge, for what it's worth, I will see if I can help Mr. McKillis get that guy's cooperation. Okay. I don't I don't promise any results. Again, I mean this is how this is how it goes in any, every trial. Um, this trial just happens to take a little longer. Um, it sounds like we're speeding up and his doctor's appointment may not have had to be canceled, but you know, we'll work on it. But anything else? Um, my other matter is regarding a witness, Tanya Carlson, who I believe the state anticipates calling today. Um, preparing for her testimony, it's clear that she witnessed some kind of incident uh, two months before uh, the date of the alleged offense. She was a co-worker with, a, with Megan Brown, and she observed some kind of argument between uh, Mr. Matos and Megan. Uh, and uh, I talked to Mr. Sarabia. He agrees that that will be character evidence barred by 9404. But he's indicated that he'd like her to reference that date to bring up the fact that they, there was tension between Mr. Matos and Megan. I still think that's in violation of 404's bar uh, against character evidence. Uh, what happened two months before this is not related to this case. And, uh, to leave on the prejudice. The state is not required to prove a motive in this case, obviously. Uh, as human beings, we all have our moments of uh, tenseness, if that's what was going on that day, and moments of humor and happiness. So I think uh, I'm asking the court to preclude any such mention of that incident uh, via Ms. Carlson's testimony. Okay. Uh, Judge, first of all, um, 
I don't think that we've agreed in quite the same way that Ms. Brickell has represented it. My understanding of Mr. Carlson's testimony is that she will describe that she introduced Megan Brown to Nicholas Leonard at the Fisherman's Shack during that same time period. Megan Brown was waiting to speak to her boss after her shift. And she also, the only time Ms. Carlson's ever seen or met Mr. Matos, Mr. Matos arrived and uh, made Megan Brown leave earlier than they expected. And I'm not going to go into any details of that, but just that there was some tension between the two of them as Megan Brown left prior to speaking with her boss. And it goes to the nature of the relationship. Uh, there was case law argued in the previous motion to admit the 911 tape that it, the nature of the relationship is a relevant matter, uh, how the parties relate to each other. There's nothing particularly up about it that's a bad act or would be barred by 404. Uh, so we feel that it is relevant and admissible testimony. Okay, so let me make sure I understand what this witness is going to testify to. She's going to be called to the stand. She's going to say that she worked, worked with Megan Brown in July of 2014. July and August. What? July and August. Right. July and August 2014 at the whatever shack? Fisherman Shack. Fisherman Shack. And that on a specific day, she did meet Adam Atos on one occasion. Correct. And that same day, she introduced Nicholas Leonard to Megan Brown. Correct. So we got that, those two knowing each other meeting. So that is relevant to show that they knew each other and they met each other and that they knew each other. Correct? Okay. So to that, that's fine. So she's going to a co-worker. She introduces Nicholas Leonard to uh, Megan Brown. And Megan Brown uh, late that day was going to wait after her shift and speak to her boss. Correct. Then Mr. Matto shows up to the fisherman shack. Is Mr. Uh, Leonard still there? Uh, I believe so. I don't believe there's any contact or she won't testify regarding any contact between me and uh, Nicholas Leonard. Okay, so there's not going to be any testimony that Ad and Matos met Nicholas Leonard on that day. Correct. Or knew who he was or, or anything like that. Nothing extensive, no. Okay. So she is sitting there, your witness, and with Megan when Megan's waiting to speak to her boss. And then Adam shows up and there's tension and then Megan has to leave before she speaks to the boss. Correct. All right. So. I don't have any problem with that testimony as long as the words made her isn't part of it. Okay. Um, because that would be a, in my mind, that would show some power and control. Uh, I assume there was some tension. Megan chose to leave before she talked to her boss. There wasn't any physical violence, was there? There was, Judge, but we were going to go into that. Okay, so he literally dragged her out. Dragged her out. But you're not going to go into that. Not going to go into that. So, and right. the nature and the relevance of, of it is that, does she know exactly what day it was? She does not know exactly what day. How close to when was Megan's last day of work? I believe she'll place it within three to four weeks. This was her first day of work, not her last day of work. So it would have been roughly approximately two months, which is the time they moved to Florida, which would be July, beginning of July of 2014. I, I can check really on that. I'm not sure if she's going to give an exact, able to give an exact time period other than it was early on. <coughs> okay. And so what you're trying to say is that there was tension between Mr. Matos and Ms. Brown even as early as when they moved to Florida. Correct. Um, so that's fine. Um, I just we won't go into made made her. Just say Adam showed up. There was tension, and then Megan left before she was able to speak. I left with Mr. Matos before she was able to speak to her boss. But she came back work again, and I never saw Adam there again. He never showed up again. I assume she's going to say that, right? I, don't, I believe she's going to say she never. Spoke she never saw him there. Okay. Again. Um, all right, as long as I will need some time to talk to her about it. I will probably lead her through that as okay. best I can. Any objection to a little leading so that we don't get out of the bounds of what I just ruled? Not at all. 
okay. and judge in the same light. I know that there's going to be family members that testify today. I like to be as respectful to them as possible. I understand they lost loved ones in their next of kin. We're in a no win situation where we're trying to represent our clients to the best of our abilities, where we're entitled to cross examination, and it, but at the same time, we don't want to beat up these, uh, these next of kin. So I'm a little bit concerned. Uh, I've read the depots, there's a lot of hearsay, a lot of inadmissible stuff. And perhaps the state can talk to them about that too. I, I, I anticipate that there's going to be some volatility testified to by uh, Mr. Thomas, which on the same grounds we think is invisible. I, I, I do not intend to go into that with Mr. Thomas. So that resolves that issue. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Thomas, I would just ask the state to remind the witnesses to answer the questions that are asked and not to add anything to them. I assume, Mr. Schrader, you have specific questions to get out specific facts that you believe this jury needs, correct? Correct, sir. And you don't need anything else, right? Correct. So they're not gonna help by adding things that are not asked. All they're gonna do is um, cause issues um, with the court. So the family members are testifying. They have every right to testify to whatever the state can put on, whoever they want, for whatever reasons they want, as long as it's admissible and relevant testimony. Just remind your witnesses to answer the questions that are asked. Most, of, and I would assume most of your questions are going to be more this date, that date, yes, no. Correct? Mostly yes. All right. Um, Mr. McHales, uh, for the defense, any objection to allowing the state leeway in leading, especially with the family members, so that we don't get into a situation where they don't understand the question? Not at all, Judge. Actually, under these circumstances, it'd be highly appreciated. Okay. So, Mr. Sharabia, feel free, if you need to, to lead so that we get to the exact issue that needs to be talked about without going into issues that don't need to be talked about. Very good, Judge. All right. Um, I will step off the bench for 10 minutes to give you an opportunity to speak to your next couple witnesses. Um, and that way, um, and then I'll bring the jury up. I'll have the jury be brought up at 10. They won't be outside at 10. I'll tell my bell to go downstairs at 10 to bring them up. Okay? okay. It takes about 10 minutes to bring them up anyway. Very good. So we'll be in recess till 10 o'clock. And then at 10 o'clock, we'll send someone down to get the jury. Okay? I'll come back on in case there's other issues that need to be resolved before they walk in. All rise. Before being recess, 10 o'clock. Judge Ballone was nice enough to send me a copy of the jury instructions that he used in the last trial. So I, I was asking his assistant if she would. And I'd asked him last week, so yeah. they just got it. Well, that's good. Both sides ready to go? The jury's outside? Yes? yes All right, bring the jury in. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Is everybody able to follow my instructions? No yes. talking about it, reading, tweeting, or texting? Yes. yes. All right. David, you ready to call your next witness? Yes, Judge. They would call Jim Thomas. All right, Jim Thomas. <coughs> Good morning, Mr. Thomas. You can come up to the podium for me. Stop right there, raise your right hand, and be sworn by my foot. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, sir, please have a seat in the witness stand, speak in a loud and clear voice for me, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. All right, State, you may proceed. Thank you, Judge. Defense, could you please turn and introduce yourself to the jury? My name is Jim Thomas. And Mr. Thomas, are you, are you in relation to Linda Thomas? Yes, I am. I'm her husband. Now, Mr. Thomas, uh, did you know Maggie Brown? Yes, I did. Did she have any relation to you? Yes, she was my daughter. And does that make Greg Brown your son-in-law? That is correct. Um, and approximately how long have those two been together? Uh, over 34 years at this time. And uh, 
Uh, Megan Brown, she was your granddaughter? That is correct. And uh, your great-grandfather as well? Yes, I am. Tristan would be your uh, great-grandson? That is correct. I believe as we sit here today, he's about eight years old? Yes. Uh, but back in August of 2014, September 2014, he would have been four? Yes. And um, in terms of Margaret Brown, Maggie, uh, did you have a good relationship with her back in July and August 2014? Yes, I did. Um, I want to turn your attention to the beginning of July of 2014. Uh, did you assist Margaret Brown, Greg Brown, Megan Brown, and Adam Matos move into 7719 Hatteras Drive? Yes, I did. Did you? And at that time, were you living in Florida? Yes, I was. Where in Florida about were you living? Key West. And uh, did you come up to Pasco County to assist them in the move? Yes, I did. And uh, what vehicles did they move to 7719 Hatteras Drive in? They had a motorhome, a U-Haul rental truck. Megan had a small SUV, a Blazer, I believe. And my daughter had a car, Dodge Caravan Silver. Which I'm displaying states 311 that appear to be Megan's uh, Blazer or SUV. Yes, it does. And they moved in, did they move in with a bunch of furniture and heavy objects and boxes and things? Yes, they did. Who all uh, helped move all the heavy stuff? Myself, Adam, and my daughter, Margaret. Was Greg Brown moving any of the heavy stuff? No, he was incapacitated uh, because of back surgery and whatnot. Okay. Uh, and, and you were helping move some of the heavy objects, huh? Yes. Have you aged a lot since this incident happened? Yes. I don't know that I'd have you moving around a lot of heavy objects around today, huh? No, they don't want me to pick up more than 18 pounds, but... Okay. But back then, you were good to move the furniture and help them with the, the boxes and everything? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and did that involve moving up and down the stairwell in the outside of the residence up to the front door? Yes. Uh, so did you pass by there a number of times? Many times. I want to show you. Uh, did you ever notice, was there a hole on the wall along, along that, that wall that would coordinate to Megan's bedroom as you were going up and down those stairs? No, there wasn't. Um, now, did Margaret bring any animals with her? when she moved to 7719 Hatter's Drive? Yes, she did. What kind of animals were they? They were small dogs. A number of them? That, that she had two litters at the time with her, one being older than the others. And I believe there were three very young puppies that were Yorkshire Poodle Cross. And she called them, they looked like little Rottweilers, actually. Okay, and uh, was, had Margaret previously and then continued to raise dogs during that time period? Yes. I want to ask you some about the residence itself. Um, where were you staying while you were there? I stayed in Megan's bedroom and slept in her bed. And that would have been in the southeast bedroom on the second floor? That is correct. And I'll show you the diagram real quick. I'm displaying states 59. Would that coordinate to the room labeled room A on the diagram? Yes, that's room A, and that's where I stayed. And there was a mattress in there at the time? Yes, there was. There? Uh, Greg and Maggie have the master bedroom area? Yes, they did. And do you know where Adam Matos was staying while you were there? He slept with his son in the adjoining bedroom. Uh, there was a bathroom in between Megan's bath, uh, bedroom and then there was another smaller bedroom that 
And do you know where Megan was staying while you were staying in, in her room? And she slept on the couch. Now, that room that we've been talking about is Megan's bedroom. When they moved in, was the floor bare plywood? Yes. Uh, how about the internal staircase? Uh, was that also bare plywood? Yeah, that was bare plywood also. Um, I want to turn your attention. Did you have occasion to be in the master bedroom closet during your stay? Yes, I did. Was that also bare plywood? When yes, it in? was. I'll talk about that more in a minute with you. But how many days do you think you stayed there when you went to help them move in? I stayed there from the 2nd of July through the 6th and left the 7th of July in the morning. And during that time period, at some point, did your wife Linda come and uh, stay as well? Yes, she did. Now, uh, the living room area, did, did, uh, did Maggie and Greg bring furniture with them to furnish the living room area? Yes, they did. Was that furniture that you were familiar with that they used to have in Pennsylvania? Yes, that is correct. And that was, th those were Greg and Margaret's pieces of furniture? They were. Uh, did they have a television? Yes, they did. And was that in the entertainment center in the living room? Yes. Uh, was it a, a large television? It was a large screen TV, yes. Now, can you tell the jury, did it have any defects? It had uh, a considerable amount of non-functional pixels in the upper left corner. Okay, and they're like black spots? Yeah, it was black. Um, turning your attention to your great-grandson, Tristan, uh, while you were there, what kind of activities would Tristan engage in? He would play with his Legos and hunt a, what they refer to as an iPad. Like a tablet? Yeah, a tablet. You like to play video games and stuff on, yes. on electronic devices? Yes. Um, and in terms of communicating with Tristan, particularly back then, uh, was he able to communicate with people like a, like a normal four-year-old? No. And if you were to, at that time, if you were to try and ask him what he had done over the course of a day or what had happened earlier in the week, was he going to be able to really give you that type of information? Not at all. And it, was it your understanding he was autistic in, in somewhere yes. on the spectrum? Um, I want to talk to you about the master bedroom closet. Uh, do you know if Greg Brown kept any firearms in that closet? Yes, he did. How do you know that? He showed them to me. He was quite proud of them. Okay, and I'm going to display states, or show the witness states 213. Do you recognize as the master bedroom closet? Yes. And whereabouts would Greg have kept his firearms approximately, if you know? I believe they would have been on this shelf here. And he had multiple long rifles? Yes. And a shotgun? you about the hole on the outside wall. You stayed in Megan's bedroom. I'm going to show you states 184 and 185. And 185 is a close-up of 184. While I was there, there were no holes in the wall. Okay. And I'm also going to show you states 207, uh, the master bedroom. In particular, I want to draw your attention to a defect in the corner there. Was that hole there when you were helping them move in? No. Now, I want to turn your attention. Uh, do you remember the last time you had communication from your daughter, Margaret? 
My daughter communicated with my wife, Linda, on a daily basis on Facebook. Uh, I don't participate in Facebook myself. I don't have the face for it. <laughs> um, but I talk to my daughter two, three, four times a week by phone. And she had encouraged me to upgrade to a smartphone, and I had, and I wanted to convey to her that I had done that. Now, as, as we get into August 28th through September 4th, uh, were you trying to reach your daughter, Margaret? On a continual basis. I, as the 28th, 29th, and 30th, I would say I probably called four to six times a day with no answer. Now, uh, if she's working, you wouldn't expect her to call you back immediately, right? No, she was working, but she was actually on a little vacation. Prior to the 28th, she was on a vacation? Yes. Did, did uh, Margaret and Greg and Megan and Tristan take the RV and go camping uh, somewhere around that time period for a couple days? I don't know that Megan and Tristan was with them, but I know they were in St. Petersburg on the beach with the motorhome. Okay. But by the time we get to the, the 28th, you're trying to reach Margaret now. Um, during the time that you've known Margaret up until then, if you called her, would she get back to you fairly quickly? Yes, she would. Did it ever go a day or two? Uh, did it ever a day or two pass where she did not return your call and, and communicate with you? No. Was that very unusual for you to call multiple times and not hear back from her? That was the first time. Now, as we move to September 4, 2014, uh, were you getting concerned? Very. And based on that, did you have uh, your wife, Linda, call the Pasco Sheriff's Office for a welfare check? We discussed it for a couple of days prior to her calling, and then we finally said enough is enough, call for the welfare check. Mr. Thomas, I want to show you some photographs and ask you if you recognize the people in the photographs. First, I'm going to show you what's been previously marked as States 14 for identification. I want to turn your attention to the individual in the white shirt and uh, what appear to be the plaid shorts. Do you recognize that individual? Yes, I do. That's my son-in-law, Gregory. Turn your attention to states 19 for identification. Uh, the individual pictured in the red shirt and black shorts. Uh, do you recognize that individual? Yes. And who is that? That is my daughter, Margaret. I'm going to show you states. 17 for identification. Again, I want to draw your attention to the person in the red shirt, the black, what appears to be a black hat, and some sort of black uh, yes, that's, pants. That's definitely my daughter. Your daughter, Margaret? Margaret, yes. Because you have multiple daughters, right? Yes, I do. How many daughters do you have? I have oh boy, uh, four <laughs> daughters. I had four daughters okay. at that time. Um, I want to show you states 20 for identification. I want to draw your attention to an individual in the center right of that photograph wearing a long sleeve uh, shirt and a, appears to be carrying a shovel. Do you recognize that individual? That would be the defendant, Adam Matos. Showing you states 21 for identification. Um, in the center, a little to the left, right at the bottom of the photo, 
Do you recognize the individual who appears to be wearing like a yes, light yes. gray uh, long sleeve shirt and appears to also be carrying a shovel? Do you recognize that person? Yes, that is Adam Matos. Showing you states uh, 24 for identification, a composite exhibit. In particular, I want to draw your attention to the first page. There's two photographs. Uh, they both depict an individual that's wearing what appears to be a camouflage shirt and red shorts. Do you recognize that individual? That's definitely Adam Matos. And I'm showing you states 23 for identification. I want to draw your attention to uh, a person standing on the right side of this photograph. Uh, appears to be wearing a, a darker shirt with some type of, of lighter print on it and uh, possibly some red shorts there. Do you recognize that individual? And that's Adam Matos. I want to show you stage 15 for identification. Uh, there's an individual, appears to be the only person pictured in this uh, photograph, wearing a white shirt and some type of plaid shorts. Do you recognize that individual? Yes, I do. That's that? Gregory Brown. And uh, Mr. Thomas, the person that you've identified in several of these photographs is Adam Machos and the person who <coughs> Uh, you saw move into 7719 Hatteras Drive and assist in moving some of the heavy objects. Do you see that individual in the courtroom here today? Yes, I do. Can you please point him out and identify some article of clothing that he's wearing? He's wearing a gray, uh, brownish gray suit jacket, necktie, and a gray uh, buff colored uh, shirt. The judge, may the record reflect the witnesses indicated the defendant. So reflect. If I can have, just have a moment, Judge. You may. No more questions. Cross examination. Please, court, counsel. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Now, you said on direct that uh, Gregory had back surgery at some point, right? He had back surgery, yes. And I think you also testified that the house at 7719 Hatteras Drive uh, was unfinished in some ways, correct? That is correct. Do you know why the house was unfinished? It had stood vacant for a while, was my understanding, and they were preparing to up, do some upgrades to get it ready for sale. And uh, the person who owned it was a friend of Margaret's? Yes. Well, this is, is this after the real estate market crashed? Is that yes. what it was? Okay. So they knew somebody who had this house that was vacant and yes. he rented it to them? Would you happen to know uh, how much the monthly rent was? I have no idea. Now, did you, you came to the house a couple hours after they arrived or before I, they I arrived? I believe so. It was a couple of hours after. Did you see them enter the house? They were coming and going. Uh, I mean, your family members, when they came to 7719, uh, did you actually see them unlock the doors and go no, in? No, I did not. Okay. Is it, did you, isn't it true that they didn't have keys to this house? I, did, I don't know that. You knew that Adam Matos was Tristan's biological father, did you not? I came to that knowledge indirectly. It was apparent that he was. I'm not sure. I wasn't introduced to him as Tristan's father. Okay, but you stayed there about a week, right? Yes, I did. So at the beginning you weren't sure, but then you it was brought to your attention he was his biological father. Well, I was there when we all met there on the 2nd of July, I believe it was, 
and it was apparent that he was the parent of Tristan. Okay, and you said that Margaret invited you over to help unload the, uh, their possessions and furniture? Oh, yes. Anybody else other than you and uh, Adam as far as males helping pick up this furniture? Males? No, there were no other males. Now, sir, while you were visiting, you were there approximately a week, right? That is correct. Isn't it true that when you spent time at 7719 for that one week in July, that both Megan and Adam slept in Tristan's bedroom at the same time? I was not aware that they did. I was aware that they didn't. Okay, sir. Um, do you recall uh, being deposed with regard to this case, being questioned under oath in this, perhaps in this very courtroom at some point? And uh, to yes. draw your attention to the date, I believe it was June 2nd of 2016? Yes. Now, I wasn't the attorney. It was another gentleman. Yes, right? that is correct. Counsel, okay. line page, please. Yes, Your Honor. Um, page 37, Your Honor. Lines 9 through 11. All right, give the state a moment. I will. We're good, Justice. Good to go? Yep. All right, so make a proceed. And, sir, on that date, in response to the following question, you were questioned. The question was as follows. As far as sleeping arrangements, Megan, Adam, and Tristan were all sleeping in the same room. And your answer was, that is my recollection. At that time, that was my recollection. Okay, so on June 2nd of 2016, when you were questioned under oath, your uh, recollection was that both Adam and Megan slept together in Tristan's room, correct? That is partially correct. Now, during direct examination, you said, I think the state pointed to a photograph and asked you if you recall a defect on the wall in the master bedroom. Yeah. Sir, if I, do you recall where this defect was as far as height in the master bedroom wall? It was above eye level, as I recall. Okay, and it was actually when you walk in the master bedroom, immediately, immediately to the right behind. Excuse me. Yes. The there was no defect at that time. Right. I just want to, uh, if I could, uh, make sure we're speaking of the same area in the room. Okay. Yes. So my understanding was when you walk into the master bedroom, there's uh, some kind of privacy wall immediately to the other side. There was a mark on the wall about a couple of inches, five inches from that wall. So it, if I were to tell you that that, that that defect was seven by four millimeters, seven by four yeah. millimeters, mm -hmm. at a height of, uh, let's say, about six feet, are you telling me that you could testify here accurately today that that mark was not there in July of 2014? Well, yes, I could. Or if we're talking about, I'm sorry, uh, was your testimony regarding a hole in the corner bead? Yes. Uh, a bullet hole, uh, consistent with a bullet hole? It, it wasn't there then. Okay, all right, well, all right. well then we move on. <laughs> as far as the uh, master bedroom, there were several firearms you testified to in the master closet? Yes. Now, when Mr. Shrebi showed you that photograph from my uh, vantage point, I couldn't see. But, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I think your testimony was that all those firearms, to the best of your recollection, were located on a shelf in the back of the closet. No, the, if the 
Firearms were located on a shelf on the right-hand side, walking from the living room through the closet to the bedroom. They were on the right-hand side. Now, that those shelves are those metal racks. Right. And uh, it, I couldn't tell from the photograph whether they continue, were continuous beyond the point of the photograph. Okay. But the rifles were actually located on a shelf like that, going through the closet on the right-hand side. Thank you, sir. So, just to specify again, as you're walking through the front door of the closet, it would be uh, uh, shelves Correct. to your right? Correct. Correct. Thank you. And would you agree with me that Gregory, Gregory kept these firearms unloaded? That is correct. Yeah. Sir, did Adam Matos have custody rights with regard to Tristan? Just a moment, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. I have no further questions. Any, hold on. Any redirect? No, Judge. All right, sir, you may step down. Thank you, Is he Lord. released from his subpoena? Uh, yes, sir. Defense, any objection? No, Your Honor. All right, sir, you're released from your subpoena. You may remain in the courtroom, okay? Thank you. State, call your next witness. Your Honor, State, call Daniel Leonard. Leonard, if you'll step up to the podium, if you can turn, raise your right hand and be sworn by my clerk. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right, sir, please have a seat in the witness stand and speak in a loud, clear voice for me, okay? Thank you, sir. Dave, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, sir. Could you please turn to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, introduce yourself by stating your name? My name is Daniel Leonard. I'm Nick Leonard's father. All right, Mr. Leonard, and uh, do you live in Florida? Yes, I do. And which county do you live in? I live in Hernando County. All right. And you mentioned that uh, Nicholas Leonard it was your son? Yes, he is. Um, and back in 2014, do you know his age? He was 37. All right. And what did Mr. Leonard do for uh, a living? Uh, he was a handyman and he had a tree service also. All right. Uh, Self-employed. Self-employed. Um, he was handy with tools? Yes. Um, and he had a truck that he carried his tools in? Yes, he did. All right. I'd like to show you what's been previously introduced as state's exhibits. 239, 439, you can just leave it there. Oh, and 438. Okay. Take a second to look at these three photographs, sir. Now that's his truck. <coughs> this is Nicholas Leonard's truck. That's his truck, his work okay. truck. Yeah. I'm just going to show you State's Exhibits 438 and 439. If you look at the screen, this is his truck? Yes. All right. Um, let me show the other one. All right, let me show us the 239. All right, Mr. Leonard, I'm showing you uh, what's been introduced in States uh, 239. Uh, you can see in the middle of the <coughs> photograph there is a sign. Uh, do you recognize that sign? Yes, I do. Uh, what is it? It's the uh, magnets that he used to put on the side of his truck to advertise his business. Okay. And in this photograph, the magnets are on top of his car. Right. Uh, did he ever put them there himself? No. All right. Uh, his being self-employed, this was a 
primary form of advertisement for them. Yes. Yeah. On that magnet, you can see that there's a phone number, 727-479-3100. Uh, 3139, yes. You know that number? Yes, that's his, that was his cell phone number. All right, thank you. If, uh, and then I guess so you can kind of see it backwards, but that, that was a number that if you needed to reach him, you, would, you could talk to him on. Yes, that's the number I have in my phone for him. Yeah. Okay, and did you and Nicholas talk regularly during the time frame of August of 2014? Yes, we did. Uh, how often would you guys talk? Um, at that point, we were talking about every day because he was planning on moving in with me. All right. He was going to move in with you uh, up in Hernando County? Up in Hernando, yeah. All right. So your conversations with him were regular? Yes. Uh, did, if you called him, would he, uh, uh, would he answer the phone? Yes, he would. Uh, if you called and left a message, would he call back promptly? Yes. Uh, was that the kind of relationship that you had with him uh, speaking on the phone? Yes. All right. Um, to your knowledge, when was the last time you spoke with Mr. Nicholas Leonard? Uh, it was uh, August 28th. All right. Of 2014? 2014, yeah. That was the last time you spoke with him? Right. Uh, did you guys speak on your cell phones? Yes. He, he called me and... Uh, um, I'm not going to ask you what you said, but he called you. Right. He okay. called me and uh, we spoke for, for a few minutes. All right. Did you ever hear from Mr. Nicholas Leonard again after that phone call? No, I didn't. All right. For the record, I've shown defense counsel what's been previously marked as State's Exhibit 506. Mr. Leonard, I'm going to ask you to look at this photograph. Uh, do you recognize the person in that photograph? Yes, that's my son. All right, and that's Nicholas Leonard? Nicholas Leonard. Yes. All right. Your Honor, at, the time, at this time, the state would seek to admit state 506 as the uh, next item of evidence. Any objection? There you are. 506 will be in. Mr. Leonard, I'm, I'm showing you the photograph over here. Yeah. Uh, that is your son, Nicholas Leonard? Yes, it is. And is that how he looked the last time you saw him back in August of 2000? Yes. One moment, Your Honor. All right. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Cross. Your son had another phone number too, correct? Um, not that I knew of, no. Isn't that his business number, sir? That was his, the only phone number I knew of, actually. You didn't have his cell number? I had it. That was his cell number. He didn't have a number of 727-488-8804 that was registered to him that he used on a daily basis? No, not that I know of. Sustained, he said. Three times. He had no other number. He knew of any, no other number. So at this point, he asked and answered. And your son owned a Caltech pistol, correct? Yes, he did. Um, did he have a permit to carry that concealed? Objection. Sustain. Hold on. Approach. In August of 2014, your son lived in Hudson? Yes. Uh, Woodchuck was the name of the street? Uh, Woodchuck, yeah. Woodchuck Lane? Lane, yeah. Was that a, a, a house owned by his mom? Uh, she owned it, yeah. It was a temporary residence? Uh, for him, yes.
Who is Michelle Stinson? Can I have a moment, Your Honor? Okay. <coughs> Sir, uh, what was your phone number when you communicated with your son back in this period of time? It was 727-389-0319. Uh, Did you have any others? No. And, I've had the uh, same number for 10 years. And your testimony here today is you're not aware of your son having any other numbers than the one that was on his truck. Is that your testimony? Yes. Thank you. Alex, <coughs> are you done? Yes, Your Honor. May I read your No, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Leonard, thank you very much, sir. You may step down. Is he released from his subpoena? Uh, being no objection to being released. Defense, can he be released from his subpoena? Yes. All right, sir, you may uh, remain in the courtroom. Thank you. State, call your next witness. State, call Tanya Carlson. First name again? Tanya. Tanya. Okay, thank you. Ms. Carlson, if you can step up to the podium for me. Thank you, ma'am. If you stop right there, raise your right hand and be sworn by my clerk. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Ma'am, have a seat in the witness stand and speak in a loud and clear voice for me, okay? Yes. I need to make sure everybody can hear your answers. There is a microphone there, though. Okay. So if you can make sure you speak right in the microphone, that would be great. Stay, you may proceed. Thank you, Judge. Could you please, in a loud and clear voice, turn and introduce yourself to the jury? My name's Tanya Carlson. And Ms. Carlson, what do you do for work? I'm a manager of the Fisherman Shack. And the Fisherman Shack, what, what kind of establishment is that? They it's sell bait and fishing <laughs> poles? or No, we're a beer and wine establishment. And um, what are the hours generally of the Fisherman Shack? 10 to 2, 10 a.m., 2 p.m., or 10 a.m. to 2 a.m., sorry. Okay. Um, and you're a manager. Were you working in that capacity at the Fisherman Shack back in July and August of 2014? Yes, I've been there 10 years. Uh, and who owns the Fisherman Shack? Jim Sigler. And is he, or at least back in 2014, was he involved in the, the operation of the business? Yes. Was he there regularly? Yes. <clears throat> Do you know some of the people who came there and uh, the people who worked for him? Yes. Now, uh, in terms of the Fisherman Shack, uh, did you come to meet Nicholas Leonard? Yes. Approximately when did you meet him? Uh, not much longer after I started working there. I started working in 07, so probably by 08 we were real good friends. Okay. And uh, did you meet him through your work at the Fisherman Shack? Yes. Did he come to the Fisherman Shack frequently? Every day I worked. Okay. Uh, and um, was he, were the people who hung around at the Fisherman Shack and Mr. Sigler and other waitresses, were they familiar with Mr. Leonard as well? Yes. Um, and would you describe him as a friend of yours? Yes. And how about Megan Brown? Do you know Megan Brown? Yes. When did, approximately when did you meet Megan Brown? I believe it was the end of July. Of 2014? Yes. And what were the circumstances by which you met Megan Brown? She came in and applied for a job. At the Fisherman Shack? Yes. And uh, what ended up happening? Did you guys hire her? Yes. Uh, was she a good employee? Yes. Uh, were you, uh, were you, as a manager, were you pleased with her performance? Very much. Did she show up for her shifts? Every day. Um, and Based on her working there, did you get to know her a little bit? Yes. And did you guys hang out outside of work? Yes. Now, were you present or do you know uh, whether or not Megan Brown met Nicholas Leonard? Yes. And approximately when did she meet Nicholas Leonard with regard to how long you knew Megan Brown? The first day I trained her. Okay. And what were the circumstances of that meeting? Can you describe that for the jury? 
Um, Nick come into the bar like he always did. We were, I trained her and she was get, we were getting off work at six and wait, wait for Jimmy and I had introduced him. Okay. Um, and you said wait for Jimmy. Now that particular day, I guess, was that Megan's first day? Yes. Um, and did Megan want to wait past her shift uh, and speak to Jimmy about the job? Just yeah. Um, overruled. Okay. Um, now, at that time, did you also meet or see Adam Matos? Yes. It was your understanding that uh, Matos was the father of Megan's child? Yes. And um, based on your observation, did they appear to have a tense interaction? Yes. And subsequent to that, did uh, Megan Brown leave without waiting and speaking to Jimmy Sibler? Yes. Now, um, I want to turn your attention to August 27th, 2014, which would have been a Wednesday. Yes. Were you working that day? No. Was Megan working that day? Yes. Do you remember what her shift was on August 27th? 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Did you have any plans with her following her shift? I was meeting her at 6 o'clock when she got off work and we were going to go out and have drinks. Okay. Do you have plans to go out somewhere other than the Fisherman Shack? Yes. Um, in terms of Megan Brown, were you familiar with the vehicle she used? Yes. I want to show you a state's exhibit 311. Does that look familiar? Yep. Yes. So what is that? That's her, her blue truck. Blue SUV? SUV. Actually, while I'm on the subject, um, I'm going to show you State's Exhibit 438 and 439. You recognize that vehicle? That's Nikki's truck. And Nikki, that'd be? Nick Leonard. Nicholas Leonard? And I'm showing you states 238. Do you recognize that? Yes. That's, what is that? That's the sticker I gave him that he had on the back window of the driver's side where the suicide seats were. Okay, and it's a? Shack sticker from the bar. A fisherman Shack advertisement? Or? Yeah. Okay. Now, August 27th, uh, 6 p.m. Megan gets off of work. Uh, where were you guys going? The Anchorage. And uh, did, how, how did you and Megan get there? We took my car. Okay, did Megan leave her vehicle at the Fisherman Shack yes. on August 27th at 6 p.m.? Yes. And anyone else going with you or meeting you at the Anchorage? Nicholas. Nicholas Leonard? Nicholas Leonard. And um, how, how far is the Anchorage from the Fisherman Shack approximately? Mm, five minutes away. Okay. And um, when you got there, uh, did you see that Megan Brown was getting a lot of phone activity? Yes. In particular, did you notice that she was getting some text messages? Yes. Um, how was her demeanor as she was receiving these different phone messages? She, she was getting upset. It was bothering her. And um, what, as she was getting these, was she telling you about them? Yes. As she was getting them, would she tell you who they were from? Yes. And who did she say they were from? Sustain. Judge, may we approach? You may. Overrule the objection, however, um, based on my ruling at the bench, I can proceed in that manner. Ms. Carlson, um, as Megan is receiving these phone contacts and text messages, is she describing to you who they are from? Yes. Who did she say they were from? They were from Adam, her son's dad. Now, did you personally see some of these text messages? Yes. Now, can you tell the jury of the ones that you personally saw uh, what they basically said? For her to get home, called her a few bad names, 
she needs to take care of her son, she's being a bad mom. Um, I don't want to use the curse words or the profanity, but... Uh, but they weren't nice? No, they weren't. And you indicated that uh, Megan was upset by these? Yes. Now, uh, as the evening went on, uh, did you did, did you eventually part ways with Megan Brown and Nicholas Leonard? Yes. Approximately what time? Around ten o'clock. Ten o'clock at night. Yeah. And um, was that in part because of what was going on with the the phone situation that? Mega was getting? Yeah, it was, yeah, a lot of that. It was just more of a downer. It was upset, and so it was just time to go. Okay. Was it your understanding that uh, Megan and Nick may continue to go somewhere else? They were going to take a cab, Megan, Nick, and Gordon, to Hurricanes. She okay. liked to go there to dance. And uh, Gordon, was that another friend that was out with you guys? Yes. Uh, but then you went home. Yes. Uh, was that the last time you ever saw Nicholas Leonard? Yes. Did you ever speak to him again? No. Uh, he didn't come into the fisherman shack the next day? No. Or the day after that? No. Or the day after that? No. Was that unusual? Yes. Now I want to talk to you about August 28, 2014, a Thursday. Were you working that day? Yes. What shift were you working? Day shift, 10 a.m. I got there at 9.30. Uh, when you got there, was Megan's vehicle still present? Yes. You knew it as Megan's vehicle? Yes. And, and you recognized her vehicle still here? Yes. Now, after you, uh, after you got to the fisherman shack and you're opening up, uh, did a deputy come and talk to you about the night before? Yes. And ask you questions about Megan and Adam? Yes. Uh, when, when that happened, did it cause you to do something? Yes. What did you do? I called Megan. Did you speak to her? Yes. And approximately what time would this have been? About 10, 15 a.m. And what was Megan's demeanor like when you spoke with her? She was hysterically crying. She upset? Yeah. You seemed concerned? Yeah. Did you sound afraid? Yeah. Objection. <clears throat> Overall. And uh, did you, was she supposed to work on August 28, 2014? She was supposed to relieve me at 6 p.m. And uh, based on your conversation with her at 10 in the morning, was it your understanding that she might not come in for that shift? Yeah. So you were not expecting her to come in later on August 28th? No. And was that due to the morning's events? Yes. Now, um, as the day went on, did you try and contact Megan Brown later on the 28th and into the 29th and the 30th? Yes. Did you ever hear from her again? No. Now, when you when you spoke with her at 10 o'clock in the morning, was it your understanding she might be trying to get some rest after that? She told me she was going to lay down and take a nap. So, at least for part of the 28th, you might not expect to be able to reach her immediately. No. Now, uh, what was going on with Megan that morning? Was that something that you discussed uh, with other people at Fisherman Shack? Yes. Was that something that Jimmy Sugar became aware of? Yes. Um, what about the name Kim Ward? Yes, she knew. Are you familiar with Kim Ward? Yes, I am. Who is Kim Ward? She's a very good friend of mine. Uh, friend. Does she come into the Fisherman Shack on a regular basis? Yep. Every day. Did she know Nicholas Leonard? Yes. Did she know Megan Brown? Yes. Would she have been familiar with Megan's vehicle? Yes. And uh, this the event that happened the morning of August 28th with Megan Brown, uh, that was something that would have been openly discussed with her as well? Yes. Now, based on your knowledge and their knowledge of that incident, 
were you guys keeping a close eye on Megan Brown's vehicle at the Fisherman Shack? I was blocking it in with my car. Okay, and did you do that specifically on Friday, August 29th? Yes. Uh, and is that something that uh, Jimmy Sigler actually asked you to do? Yes. Why'd you, why'd you block in Megan's car? Because we hadn't heard from her. And if her car's blocked in? No, whoever came to get it would have to come in and ask for us to move the car. Okay. Um, so Friday, August 29th, were you working on that day? Yes. And again, was that blue Chevy Blazer still there that yes. you knew was Megan's? Yes. And didn't leave on Friday, August 29th? No. And again, you weren't able to reach Megan Brown on August 29th? No. Now, uh, did she have a shift coming up, either the 29th or the 30th? She was going to work that Saturday morning. So that would have been August 30th? 30th. Did she show up for that shift? No. Did she call you and tell you that she was going to miss that shift? No. Or make any kind of arrangements to um, have that shift covered? No. Up until that time, uh, had she ever done that before? No. Was it unusual based on you working with her and, and <coughs> her, the way she conducted herself as an employee for her to not show up and not call about it? Yes. And uh, Megan Brown's phone number at that time, uh, did you have it? Yes. And did you have it in your phone? I'm sorry, I thought. That's it. Go ahead. Did yes. you keep it in your phone as one of your contacts? Yes. Now, do you remember as you sit here today what that phone number was? I don't remember the first half, but I believe it ended in 6640. Okay. Um, you know, after this happened, on, in, when law enforcement came out there on September 4th, uh, did law enforcement speak with you? Yes. And uh, did they ask to do a download of your phone? Yes. Uh, to get calls to and from people and yes. other things? And did you let them do that? Yes. Paper, it's not going to be marked, but do you recognize that as a part of your contact list from your phone from back then when it was downloaded? Yes, there are, all those are still on my phone. Uh, do you recognize the, the different people on there as names that you assigned to different yes. friends of yours? And in particular, do you see uh, Megan's name? Right there. And what phone number did you have for her? 727-207-6640. Uh, Ms. Carlson, now, uh, you did indicate you were parking behind Megan's vehicle, or you did park behind Megan's vehicle on August 29th, the Friday of 2014. Um, were you parking there while you were on your shift? Yes. You weren't leaving your car there after you left for work, were no, you? No, the next person was leaving their car there. Okay, and Fisherman Shack is closed between 2 a.m. and approximately 9.30 in the morning? Yes. So there wouldn't be anybody in the parking lot except vehicles that had been left there? Yes. Um, now, Saturday, August 30th of 2014, did you end up coming into work that day? I opened up for and everybody. What time would you get there to do that? I usually got there about 9.45. And when you got there on Saturday, August 30th of 2014, uh, was Megan Brown's vehicle still there? No. I don't have any more questions, Judge. Cross? Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Now, is it true that Nicholas Leonard was a much much closer friend to you than uh, Megan Brown was? Yeah. You've known him for several years, right? Yes. And Megan, you had just only met for less than two months, right? Yeah. And she actually started working at Fisherman Shack, what, mid-July? Yeah. So you knew about a month and a half? Yeah. And she, you just refreshed your recollection by looking your, at your contact numbers on your phone, right? No, my re Repeat that. The, the state just showed you a uh, uh, piece of paper and it contained the contacts you had on your own phone, correct? Yes. 
Now, would Nicholas Leonard be in your contact section of your phone? No. No, he wouldn't? No. I, n I, I never had Nick's number. Okay. And so you didn't know Nick's number? No. Even though you knew him for how many years? I didn't need Nick's number. He was always around. Okay. And so you don't know what his number is? No. And you don't know how many numbers he had? No. You introduced Nick to Megan Brown, correct? Yes. Now, Megan was supposed to come to work what time that day? Which day? On August 28th of 2014. Thursday, 6 p.m. she was supposed to show up. And her shift was 6 p.m. to when? 2 in the morning. Sorry? 2 in the morning. 2 in the morning. And did you work that evening? I worked that day. And you must have been concerned after all the tension you heard about and her not showing up to work, right? Yes. And she didn't show up to work the next day? Yes. Or the day after that? Yes. Or the day after that? Yes. But you never called law enforcement, did you? No, because I... I didn't ask you why. You never called law enforcement, did Counselor, you? Counselor, can we... Can you approach? Yeah. You may proceed. I can have a moment, Your Honor. Ma'am, have you ever been convicted of, fel of a felony? Yes. How many times? I believe four. Thank you, ma'am. Any more? All right, redirect. Thank you. And uh, Ms. Carlson, around the time of August 28th, August 29th, 2014, uh, Mr. McHale has asked you if you did, if you called law enforcement when uh, you weren't able to reach Ms. Brown. Did you have other things going on in your life as well? Yes. Uh, I was going to her house, but my daughter called me with an emergency, so I went home. Okay. And that kind of took your attention elsewhere and you had to deal with that situation? Yeah. Okay. And then once Megan's vehicle was gone, were you a little less concern? No, she, when she, I talked to her that morning, she said she had to get well, away. Well, I'm not, I'm not getting into that, but uh, I'll withdraw that question. Um, but also, had you had contact with law enforcement on August 28th in the morning? Prompted you to call Ms. Brown? No. Well, yes. Yes, that the police became, officer walked in and I called her. So you were aware that law enforcement was involved? Correct. Okay. I don't have any more questions, Judge. All right. Mr. Carlson, thank you very much. You may step down. Is Ms. Carlson released from her subpoena? Uh, we'd ask her to remain in standby, Judge. I'm going to go speak for you. Okay, that's fine. State, call your next witness. Mike Unsworth. Unsworth? Unsworth. Okay, Mike Unsworth. Good morning, Mr. Unsworth. If you can step to the podium right there. Raise your right hand, be sworn by my clerk. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, sir, you can go ahead and take a seat in the witness stand and speak in a loud and clear voice for me, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. State, you may proceed. Thank you, Judge. No. Morning. Morning. Would you please introduce yourself to the jury? Uh, my name is Michael Lundworth. And would you spell your last name for the court reporter? U-N-S-W-O-R-T-H. Oh, Mr. Unsworth, where do you live? Uh, I live in Beacon Woods in Hudson. And what do you do for a living? Uh, underground utilities, directional drilling. And does your job require a lot of traveling? Yes, it does. Uh, when you're traveling, are you going for extended periods of time? Yes, I am. So let's go back to 2014. Uh, let's talk about the end of August, beginning of September, the, the week of August 24th, 24th would have been a Monday of 2014, do you recall where you were? I was in uh, 
Pennsylvania. And were you there for that entire week? Yes. Were you also in Pennsylvania for the next week? Um, yes. Uh, and did you, did you come back in town on September 5th? Yes. Okay. Now, did, did you know uh, a man by the name of Nicholas Leonard? Yes, I did. And how did you know Nicholas Leonard? Uh, him and I were good friends for the last 18, 19 years. Do you remember how you met him? Uh, through a mutual friend. Uh, he had a hauling company at the time, and my mother had purchased a new home, and we were doing some cleaning on it, and he came over and uh, cleaned the stuff out of it. And where do you live in relation to where Nicholas Leonard lived? Uh, shoot, walking distance within three minutes. Lived on the next street. Both of our houses backed up to uh, 5A Road. Okay, so you live very close distance to where he lived in yes. 2014. Now, do you recall the last time you spoke to Nick Leonard? Yes, I do. And when was that? That was the 28th of August. And the 28th of August, is that a Thursday? Yes, it is. Okay. And what was the, the general nature of your phone call with Mr. Leonard? Um, I was at a town. He called me up and uh, he said he had some issues. A girl that he had been dating, her ex-boyfriend had came to the house and broken in and held her at knife point and that he was possibly going to go over there. Okay. So when you spoke to him about this, did he seem concerned? Yes, he did. And you've spoken to him, I think you said you've known him, what, 17, 18 years? Yes. Numerous times over that time period. You're Absolutely. familiar with his general demeanor. Um, how did you know that he was concerned on this particular phone call? Um, one, he knows my schedule, and he's calling me during working hours, and we generally just don't call each other throughout the week to chit-chat. You know, I come in town, and we hang out and things like that. Um, and just him calling and asking me about it and speaking to me about it, for one. Just that the fact that that phone call happened when it did yes. is unusual and indicated yes. some concern. Uh, when you spoke to him, did his, the words that he used and the sound of his voice indicate that he was concerned? Yes, yes. And did he indicate that he was going to be going over to um, Megan's house? Yes, he said he was going to go over there and uh, possibly stay over there. And did you ask him if he was going to be taking anything with him? Yes, I did. And when you asked that question, what were you referring to? Uh, I was referring to a handgun that I had sold him. And this handgun, it's, um, is it a handgun that you purchased yourself? Yes, it is. Uh, did you buy it from Old Time Gun Shop in Hudson? Yes, I did. All right, ma'am, just one second. You may. And may I approach the witness? You may. I'm handing you what's been previously entered into evidence as States 219. I've also got some gloves here for you to put on. Once you get the gloves on, would you um, remove that item and, and tell us what that is? Caltech pistol. And does that appear to be the same firearm that you purchased from Old Time Gun Shop and subsequently sold to Nick Leonard? Yes, it does. Now, do you recall when you bought the gun from Old Time Gun Shop? I'd say uh, somewhere in May. Um, May of what year? Um, 2011. And if I show you the paperwork from that transaction, would that help you figure out the exact date? Yes. You're on a map, bro. May 2012, mid-May. I'm, I'm sorry, what did you say? Uh, 2012 of May, May 2012. And do you recall approximately when you sold the firearm to Nicholas Leonard? Probably six, about six months after I purchased it. Okay, so somewhere around the end of 2012, roughly? Mm-hmm. Okay. And just for the record, mm -hmm means yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sorry. She's typing everything down, and mm -hmm and uh huh look the same when they're yeah, typed out. And so, when you asked Nick if he was taking anything with him, um, did he indicate that he was taking that particular firearm with him? Yes, he did. And his reason was for protection. Yes. Now. Did you also call Nicholas Leonard on the 29th, which would be the Friday, the day after you spoke to him? Yes, I did. 
And did you get him on the telephone? No, I didn't. Now, when you, in the past, when you call Mr. Leonard, does he normally return your phone calls? Yes, he does. Does he always return your phone calls? Yes, he does. Uh, so him not returning your phone call was unusual? No. Uh, yes, yes, okay. it's unusual. Now, you continued to be in Pennsylvania, though, throughout the next week? Yes. And when you spoke to, to Mr. Leonard on the 28th, did you make plans for the following Friday, September 5th? Yes, I did. The 7th was my wife's birthday. And uh, what were your plans, just in general? Uh, we're just going to cook some food at the house and hang out. And you know, are we all going to do that on the 6th? Yes. Okay. So uh, you, did you come back in town on the 5th, you said? Yes. And you, did you call Mr. Leonard on the 5th? Yes, I did. And did you get him on the telephone at that point? No, I did not. And you didn't get him on, on the phone on the 29th. One week, week later, you didn't get him on the 5th, and you said you hadn't heard from him after that 29th phone call. Correct. Did that cause you to be concerned? Yes, it did. So what did you do at that point? So the 6th, when we were setting up for the barbecue and just you know, going back and forth to Publix, um, after I couldn't get in touch with him, um, my wife had called me and asked if something happened to him, and I said I didn't know. So that's when I called his mother. And is that when you found out that he had been murdered? Yes. Okay. Now, are you familiar with the vehicle that Nicholas Leonard drove at the time? Yes, I am. If I showed you a picture of it, would you recognize it? Yes. You're on a map person. Now I'm showing you what's been previously introduced into evidence. It states 238, 439, 438, and 239. Are these, do these appear to be images of Nicholas Leonard's vehicle? Feel free to look at them. You, you can take it off. Yes, that is his truck. And I believe you said this is uh, Nicholas Leonard's truck? That is his truck. And earlier today, did you have an opportunity to listen to uh, a portion of a 911 call made by Nicholas Leonard on August 28th? Yes, I did. And the voice on that phone call, did you recognize it? Yes, I did. And is that, in fact, Nicholas Leonard's voice on the telephone call? Yes, it is. Thank you, Judge. We have no further questions. Cross? No questions, Judge. All right, sir, you may step down. Is he released from his subpoena? He is. Defense, any objection? No, you Sir, you're released from your subpoena. Thank you very much. You're free to go. Fish, we approach? You may. Wait for lunch, so it won't be a long time until we get back, okay? No talking about the case. All jurors present here. All right. State, you ready to proceed? We are, Your Honor. All right. Call your next witness. Your Honor, State, we call Michelle Kidder. All right. Michelle Kidder. Good morning, Ms. Kidder. If you want to come on up and stand next to the podium for me. You can raise your right hand and be sworn by my clerk. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Please have a seat in the witness stand over here. Speak in a loud and clear voice for me, okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Dave, may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Could you please turn to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, introduce yourself by stating your name. Um, my name's Michelle Kidder. And Ms. Kidder, uh, where do you live? Um, Port Ritchie. All right. And how long have you lived in Port Ritchie? About 11 years. All right. Uh, are you currently employed? Uh, no, unemployed. All right. And at a time prior to today, were you employed and working for Wawa? Yes. All right. What did you do for Wawa? Um, I've started out as a customer service associate and became a deli manager. And just so we're clear, what, what kind of store is Wawa? Um, convenience store slash deli. We also have gas. All right. And how long did you work for Wawa? Um, almost four years. 
And w to the best of your recollection, when did you start working for Wawa and when did you end? Oh, it's been... I started in 2001, into 2000, beginning in 2001, All right. and left there in 2004. All right. Uh, well, let me ask you this question. If, if or back, five. Sorry. All right, were you working there back in uh, 2014, within the last few years? Oh, here I'm Costa? sorry. I meant 2010 to 2015. Okay. A little nervous today? Yes. <laughs> you testified before? Have you ever testified before? No. Okay. Uh, well, let me just ask you some questions about uh, Wawa in general. Uh, you kind of mentioned it's a uh, convenience store and more. Uh, do they have cash registers and uh, electronic uh, devices for payment? Uh, yes. All right. So if someone needs to pay with a credit card, they have that? Yes. Um, as part of the record keeping at uh, Wawa, do they also have video surveillance? Uh, yes. All right. And in your position, uh, with Wawa, were you familiar with the video surveillance systems at the Wawa that you worked at? Yes. Um, and I can imagine that they have cameras to catch all the important angles within a store. They cover pretty much every inch of the store except the bathrooms. And as an employee at the store, you were aware that those existed? Yes. And you actually had an opportunity from time to time to see the uh, videos that were collected, correct? Yes. Uh, what store did you work at uh, in 2014? Uh, I looked at uh, 5115. It's at uh, 5419. So the store number is 5115. Yes. Uh, and the actual physical location is where? 5419. Okay, here in Pasco County. Yes. And during your time with Wawa, did you always work at that store? Uh, majority of the time, once in a while, we would switch other stores, help them out go okay. to other locations. Let's talk about that for a second. Uh, is the hours of Wawa, is it a 24-hour store? Yes. So if a store wanted to put on some sort of event for its employees, uh, they would have to have employees from another store come fill in? Yes. Okay, is that what you were referring to? Yes. And did you actually do that? Yes. Um, and I'd like to focus your attention to a particular date where you may have done that, all right? Uh, do you recall working on August the 28th of 2014? Um, yes, we were. I was working at the uh, store on 19 in Ridge. All right. Um, they were having a picnic for their staff. Uh, it was the yearly gratitude uh, parties. Everybody, at each store does a different one. Okay. Um, and the three surrounding stores in our area would cover that store when they left. Okay, so some employees from your store, some employees from other stores would come together to, <coughs> to help out. To cover all the shifts, yes. Okay. Um, and during your time with Wawa, did you do that regularly? Um, it, probably about twice a year. And how is it that you got selected to go to that store? Um, availability and I was going up for management at the time at my store. All right, so this is a, po a position or an opportunity for you to prove yourself as a good employee. Yes. All right. At your home store, did you work with a, a female by the name of Margaret Brown? Uh, yes, we knew her as Maggie. Okay. So you, you knew her as Maggie, but if I refer to her as Miss Brown, we're talking about the same person? Yes. All right. How long had you known Miss Brown? A um, couple months. Okay. And to your knowledge, uh, she worked at Wawa? Yes. And what was her role at Wawa? Uh, she was our cashier. All right. Uh, and did you have knowledge of whether or not she had worked at a previous Wawa? Um, as far as I knew, she was a transfer. She came from Jersey. Okay. Uh, transfer from another store? Yes. All right. <coughs> and was uh, Ms. Brown selected to go with you to the store on 19 and Ridge? Yes. To work on that fill-in date? on August the 28th of 2014? Yes. Um, what do you recall what that shift was? Uh, 3 to 11. All right. 3 p.m. to 11 p.m.? Yes. All right. Is there a name for that kind of Second shift? Second shift. All right. Uh, and during that shift, uh, <coughs> did she actually show up for work? Yes. And uh, you remember seeing her in the store? Yes. Um, during the time that she was in the store, what job did she perform inside uh, the store? cashier in front and basically clean up you know uh, your area where you're at and register. All right. 
And during that time frame, what was your job in the store? Um, I was in the deli. All right. Um, they say they're, slight, they're in the same store, but just different areas. Yes. Back in 2014, did Wawa have a particular dress code for their employees? Um, khaki or black pants in a, a logo red or black shirt. All right. And it would, those would be available to employees if they need to purchase them, or Wawa would actually give you them if, if you um, At start, you get some. If you need to purchase extra, you can. I'd like to show you what's been previously introduced as States Exhibits 289 and 290. Okay, I want you just to kind of look at these two photographs. Do you recognize generally what this photograph is displaying? Uh, a Wawa's employee's t-shirt. Okay, those are Wawa employee t-shirts. And would you agree with me that States Exhibit 290 has the Wawa logo on? Yes. Okay. Did your shift act end on a, at 11 o'clock p.m. on August the 28th of 2014? Um, a few minutes after, but yes. You were in the deli. Did you have to clean up a little bit? Um, <coughs> when the shift takes over, the deli is a high area, high volume area. Mm -hmm. So um, just give a rundown, let them know what I'm doing, what, where I left at before I left. All right. Did you see uh, whether or not Ms. Brown ended her shift? Um, I, we wore walkies headsets. She did say goodbye before she unplugged her, so I knew she was leaving. All right. You guys were, uh, for the, you guys were work friends, correct? Yes. Um, and this, again, this is the store on 19 and Ridge, correct? Correct. All right. I'd like to move forward uh, one day in time uh, to August the 28th of 2014. Were you scheduled to work that day? Uh, yes, I was supposed to be at my store at 5419, um, 3 to midnight. All right, and that's the same show, oh, that's the same store that Ms. Brown worked at as well, yes. too. To your knowledge, did Ms. Brown, was she scheduled to work that day, August the 29th of 2014? She was scheduled, um, I believe she was in after me. I think she was working 4 to midnight, but she was scheduled to work that day. All right. And to your knowledge, uh, during your shift, did Ms. Brown show up for work? No. Uh, during the time that you knew Ms. Brown and worked with Ms. Brown, was that care was that something that she would normally do, not show up for a shift? Oh, uh, she never no called no show ever. You say no called no show. What does that mean? Um, didn't call in advance to let us know she wasn't going to make it. And then not show up for work. Right. Um, let's go move forward an another day in time, August the. 30th of 2014, all right? Were you scheduled to work that day as well? Um, I believe so. And uh, do you know whether or not Ms. Brown was scheduled to work that day? Um, I'm not positive. Um, I know we still hadn't heard from her. Okay. And the management was still trying to get a hold of her from not showing up the day before. Okay. Uh, and to your knowledge, did she ever call or show up at the Wawa at your no. store ever again? No. All right. May I vote, Your Honor? You may. Thank you, Ms. Kidder. I have, I have no further questions for you. Cross? No question, Chairman. All right, Ms. Kidder, thank you very much. If you step down, is she released from her subpoena? She is, Your Honor. All right, defense, any objection? No, Your Honor. All right, ma'am, you're released from your subpoena. Thank you. Call your next witness. Your Honor, the state would call Natalia Quezon. Ms. Quezon, if you can step up to the podium for me. Stop right there. Raise your right hand and be sworn by my clerk. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right, now you can have a seat in the witness stand here and speak in a loud and clear voice for me, okay? There's a microphone in front of you, so just try to speak right into it, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, proceed. Good afternoon, ma'am. Could you please turn to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury, introduce yourself by stating your name? Natalia, N-A-T-A-L-Y-A, Kaysen, C-A-S-S-O-N. All right, Ms. Kaysen, and, and where do you live? I live in Newport Ritchie. All right. How long have you lived in Newport Ritchie? For about seven years, eight years. All right. And are you currently employed? Yes. And where do you work? Wawa, on Ridge and, and Little. On Ridge and Little. Yes. Just, just
Just right clip of the courthouse. Yes. Uh, how long have you worked at that Wawa? I'm going there in five years. All right. How long has that Wawa been there? Almost five years. All right. Are you an original employee to that <laughs> yes. store? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, and I assume based on that that you've worked at that Wawa during the time frame of 2014. Yes. And what kind of job duties do you perform at Wawa? I'm a shift manager, so I'm responsible for my shift when I run the store. Okay. Uh, from time to time, uh, do you work the cash register? Yes, cash register, the deli, anything that customers need help, I'm, I'm there to help them. All right. Uh, I'd like to focus your attention back to a specific day in uh, 2014, August the 28th. Do you recall working on that day? Yes, I have. All right. You told us that you work at the store over here on Ridge and Little, uh, but on that day, August the 28th of 2014, were you working at a different store? Yes, I have. Tell us about uh, how that came to be. Um, I volunteered to work at 08, which is a different store, for that day to help out, and I was there with people that came in from different stores. All right. Uh, did you work at that? Do you recall the location of that store? Yes. Where, where was it? It's on Ridge, 19 by Walmart. So. Okay. And did you work in that shift with another employee from your store? Yes, I have. And who was that? Annie Golan. Annie Golan. Okay. And were there other employees inside that store that came from different stores? Yes. Uh, and do you recall what time your shift started? Yes. When did it start? Two. PM to you 11 called? PM. To 11 PM. Yes. And is that the shift that you actually worked? Yes. Uh, during that shift, did you have an opportunity to meet someone who introduced himself as Margaret Brown? Yes. All right. Was this the first time you met Miss Brown? I have. That's my first time. Yes. And she worked the, the same shift that you did. Yes. We all volunteered, and she was there with us. All right. She came from a different mm -hmm. store as well. Yes. All right. Um, during that time in 2014, was there a, spe a specific dress code that Wawa had for his employees? Yes, can always. Can you tell us what that is? Black pants, and they give you a red shirt. If not red, it'll be black, and right. an apron with the hat. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been previously introduced as takes exhibits uh, 289 and 290. You, you recognize uh, what's being shown in, these, in this photograph? Yes. All right, what is it? A Wawa shirt with the Wawa logos and it's red. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. When you, uh, and you've worked there for quite a while and you're shift manager, you're, are you aware that Wawa has video surveillance inside the store? Of course. Is that something employees are told and, and, and they know about? Yes. Uh, are there video surveillance inside of the uh, store? Of course. How about in the back area where management may be? Yeah. How about video surveillance on the exterior of the store? Always. And as part of that video surveillance, there is a uh, time associated with the videos. Is that correct? Of course. Yeah. Uh, and you've seen that before? Yes. All right. Uh, Ms. Kaysen, have you had an opportunity to uh, view videos of the store that you worked at back on August the 28th of 2014? Yes. All right. And do you see yourself in the videos? Yes. Okay. Uh, and do you see Miss Brown in the videos? Yes. And do you see your friend uh, that you've uh, indicated, Miss Anne Marie Gold? Annie. Yes, she All was right. there. Fair to say that the videos fairly, fairly and accurately display the events that happen within inside yes. the store. Yes. Of course. Yes. Okay. During your shift, uh, did you work the cash register on that day? Yes, I have. I was, yep, from 2 to 11, I was in charge of a cash register, so ringing people up. All right. And if an employee wants to buy something in the store, can they buy something as well? Yes. They give us a discount, so if we purchase something, they'll give us a discount with a little key, and we just ring you up, use the discount, and you, that's it. You right. pay for your food, and you go. Upon watching the videos from August the 20th of 2014, did you see yourself completing a employee transaction? Yes, I have. And was that with Ms. Brown? Yes. All right. For the record, Your Honor, I've shown def defense and the, the witness states exhibit 16 for identification. 
Mr. Nyocha, I ask that the witness be allowed to step down so that we can discuss uh, this video. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You can step down. Um, are we going to keep the video where it is right now? I guess we could do that. Uh, it's, we'll just keep it there. Yep. So you can have a seat. We'll just keep it right here. Can you see the monitor from where you're sitting? Yes. Okay. She needs to step down a point. She can do that. Okay. And, and just for the record, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move in, uh, ask to move in States Exhibit 16 as the next item of evidence. Any objection? Move. All right. 16 will be in evidence. All right. And so. Ms. Kaysen, I'm going to ask you to look at the monitor over here and kind of just describe what this area is. That's a, cash, uh, that's a counter where you ring customers up, and that's a cash register where I stand and ring customers up for their purchases. Okay, and I know it's really small, but I'm going to ask you to come down with me for a second. And I'm going to ask you to identify the time located on, the best of your ability, and you can get right up on uh, it. 451. Okay, uh, 4 p uh, 4.51 p.m.? Yes. And that's during your shift? Yes. All right, thank you, then you can have a seat. All right, go ahead and get lunch for me. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it play for a minute. Is that you walking up? Yes, Pause it, it thank you, sir. Is that you with the black hat? Yes, it is. And what are you wearing? A black shirt, the black hat, and you can See my tattoos. <laughs> okay, you have the same tattoos you have here today, right? Yes. Uh, also, see your hair. Yes. Okay. That's me. And at the time that we're in this video, you're helping a, a customer. Is that correct? Yeah, of yes. Ring him up, like I always do. Yeah. Okay. And then there's someone, uh, yeah, I guess, in line. Who is that? Maggie. That was Maggie. Yes. Okay. And we're saying, uh, Maggie, that's because that's how you knew her, correct? Yes. That's I refer to her as Miss Brown. Miss Brown. The same person. Yeah. Everybody calls her Maggie, so I guess, yeah. Better okay. Brown. If you could go ahead and hit play. She handing you that employee identification mm -hmm. card? Yes. <clears throat> okay, is the transaction complete at that time? Yes. Okay. Ma'am, as you watched that video, did she pay with a credit card? Yes, she has. She did, yes. Okay. All right. And then you agree with me, this is during your shift, is that correct? Yes. You've also had an opportunity to look at some videos uh, that came at the end of your shift. Is that correct? Yes. And do the same questions. Do the, the videos at the end of the shift, do they accurately depict the things that, that happened in the store towards the end of your shift? Yes. And what time did you say your shift ended that day? 11. All right. And how soon after does it take you to get your stuff ready to go? Like five minutes, not even five, six minutes. After I clock out, I go outside. I just talk to my coworkers for a little bit and I go home. Ma'am, are you a smoker? Sometimes. All right. It so depends some, on the day. All right. <laughs> can you can you uh, can you smoke inside the store? No. So if you're an employee and you want to smoke, you have to go yeah. outside. Yeah. Yeah. Of right. course. Fair to say that some of the videos show you uh, you and another employee outside. Yeah. Amy. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit 18. That's that video towards the end of the shift. Do you see your initials on there? Yes. Okay. Uh, this is the video of the of your end of your shift, correct? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, the state would seek to admit State's Exhibit 18 as the next item of evidence. Any objection? Go ahead. 18 will be in. Just 
give me a moment to get it all get it all queued up. Ma'am, would you agree with me that in the video that we looked at, States Exhibit 16, um, that in the video, the person you referred to as Maggie, uh, she's wearing a red employee shirt? Yes. step down and uh, at least as to the, the time stamp at the bottom here it's hard to see on the white floor but can you read the stamp that's, time stamp that's here? Yeah, 11 03. All right, thank you ma'am. That was at, towards the end of your shift or yes. the end of your shift? Yes. All right, what area are we looking at here and what's uh, of the store? The front when you come in or when you leave so the front of the door. All right. We're going to go to a specific time. Right. We're just going to let it play here for a minute or so. And this is the door that exits to the outside, is that correct? Yes. Do you recognize the area that's being shown here in this? Yes, it's, it's the uh, gas pumps and that's where the front when you walk in the store. Appreciate the patience. All right, Ms. Kaysen, I'm going to ask you to look at the screen and uh, do you see someone uh, who is uh, 
coming out of the store. Yes, Maggie. Who, who is that? Maggie. Maggie, Ms. Brown. Brown. Um, if you were, is that a, that's the front of the store, correct? Yes. The door is right there. Just come out of this way. Yes. All right. And this, she's kind of walking along the front of the store? Yes. All right. And if you could, ma'am, I'm just going to ask you to step down with me just real one quick second. I'm going to ask you to read the time stamp on the bottom of the video. You can get right in front of me. We want to make sure. 11, 10, 31, 59 p.m. Okay. 11, 10, and 31 seconds p.m. done here is we've changed the angle of one of the side cameras, okay? okay. Do you recognize the two people that are in the uh, video here? Yes, myself and my coworker Annie. All right, I'm, I'm going to, I'm just for, I'm going to point and I want you to tell me who we're talking about here. Who's this? Myself. And who's that? My coworker Annie. Okay. We're going to let it play for a minute. All right, Ms. Kaysen, uh, who was that that walked into the screen? Ms. Brown. Okay. Um, and if she had followed from the last path, Yes. She would have led you right here. Yes. The direction in which she's walking to, what's over there? Her vehicle. Okay. From where you were sitting, could you see Ms. Brown get into her vehicle? Yes, you can. Do you recall the make uh, or at least the color of her vehicle? It's a minivan and it's a white or a silver. Okay. And the way she took off, there was something wrong. The, wow. way, the way she went in her car, reversed and took off. I, I knew something was going on. All right. Sounded a little off to you. Yeah. Okay. And I just looked at my coworker and said, I hope everything's okay. That's it. That was it, the last time. It fled. I'm just going to ask you to watch the, the monitor and I'll, I'll pause it here in a second. And you see the vehicle that has entered the view of the camera? Yes. Looks like a. Whose yeah. vehicle was that? I believe it's Ms. Brown's. Okay. You, you were able to watch her get into the vehicle? Yes. All right. Ma'am, I'm getting for the last time today. I'm going to ask you to step down with me. And if you could read the, the time stamp on this video 11 11 43 36 p.m. All right. 11 11 p.m. <clears throat>
I mean, I would like to take a minute to look at all these photographs, if you could. time the state would seek to admit state's exhibits 17 and then 507 through 511. Any objection? All right, 17 will come in and 507 through 512? 512. Yeah, we'll Thank you, ma'am. I have no further questions. Thank you. Hold on, hold on oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. The other side might have a question or two. Oh, I gotta ask. Yes. Any questions? No question, Darren. Now you get to go. All right. Thank you, ma'am, for Thank coming you. in. Is she released from her subpoena? She is, Your Honor. All right, ma'am. You're free to go, and you're released from your subpoena. Thank you. State, call your next witness. Uh, Your Honor, the state would call Ann Gold. Is it G O L D? No, Your Honor. It's G A U L D. Thank you. Cool. Gould, do you want to step up to the podium right here? You can turn and raise your right hand and be sworn by my clerk. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right, please take the witness stand and speak in a loud and clear voice for me, okay? There's a microphone there. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. <coughs> Good afternoon, ma'am. Could you please turn to ladies and gentlemen of the jury and introduce yourself by stating your name? My name is Ann Gall. And ma'am, where do you work? Wawa. And how long have you worked there? Almost five years. And which store do you work at? 5109 right at um, Bridge and Little Road. Right near the courthouse, correct? Yes. And have you worked your entire time at that store? Yes. All right, and what are your duties at Wawa? Um, I am working mainly in the smoothie area, okay. but I am able to work any position in the store. Okay. Um, and I'd like to focus your attention back to August 28th of 2014. Do you remember working on that night? Yes, sir. And what store were you working at? 5108, which is at the intersection of 19 and Ridge. All right. And that's not your normal store? No, sir. And how is it that you came to work at that store? Their store was having a store function, so other people were brought in to cover from other stores. Okay. And from your store, who was there? Natalia Kason and myself. And um, do you recall what your shift was? Like the time, when it started, when it ended? We were 3 to 11 that evening. All right. And uh, did you work with other members from another store? Yes. And do you recall meeting an individual who introduced herself as Margaret Brown? Yes. Did she introduce herself by a different name? Maggie. Okay. Was that the first time that you met Maggie? Yes. Uh, and she worked the shift with you? Yes, sir. Um, and if she worked, did she work the same shift, meaning she would have got off at the same time? Yes, sir. And at the end of your shift, is there something that you can maybe r ritualistically do? As far as I'm a smoker, so the first thing I do when I get off of shift is go outside to smoke a cigarette. All right, and you were called doing that on August the 28th, yes, 2014. Uh, in fact, have you had an opportunity to view the video surveillance from the store that you worked at? Yes, sir. And did you, did you see yourself in the video surveillance? Yes, sir. And did you see uh, Natalia? In the yes, sir. Did you also see uh, Margaret Brown? Yes. I'm going to ask, ma'am, that you look over on the uh, video, you, if you can see it from there, and just for the record, we're talking about Stacey Exhibit 18. All right, ma'am, I'm going to go ahead and let it play, and I want, I'll stop it and ask you to comment in a second.
Any of you recognize that person? I can't see very well. All right, you got to step down, put on your glasses, whatever helps. Let me ask you this way. Is that you? Yes, I do believe that might be me. Well, let me do this. Let's go to... It's not a very clear picture. And I understand. Let's go to the side view. That's me sitting down. Okay. All right. Uh, and just so we're clear, I'm going to point. I want you to identify who you, who you are. Is, it, is that you? That is me. And who's that? Natalia. Okay. In this area, can you describe the area that's shown here in the video? Um, off to this side over here is the McDonald's, and um, the other side is our store, and I'm facing the front of the store. All right. Is there also parking in that area? <laughs> yes, sir. All right, and what are you doing in this vi in this video? Um, just leaning down, smoking a cigarette, talking to Natalia about our shift after work. Okay. And uh, at the end of your shift, did, did Miss Brown leave it around the same time that you did? Yes, sir. Shortly yeah. after we did. All right. And do you recall seeing her leave the store? Yes, sir. She walked past us while we were sitting out there. She walked past us said have a nice day it was nice working with you nice meeting you hopefully we'll work together again okay and then what did she do after that she proceeded to go to her vehicle get in her vehicle and pull out all right now i'm going to ask you to watch the video here in a second Who is that, ma'am? That would be Margaret. Okay. Kind of, uh, that's when she was giving you the, the advice. Yes, it was ni nice working with you, nice meeting you, having, you know, hopefully we'll work okay. together again sometime. And you were able, from where you were sitting, see her get into her vehicle? Yes, sir. And that would be the headlights to her vehicle right there. Okay. And is that the vehicle? That is the vehicle that she got into and left in. Okay. here you said is the side of the store correct yes sir earlier I showed you a, uh, a kind of the front of the store area yes sir and there's video cameras out there as well yes sir if you were going to exit the store and walk down to this way would you come out the store and turn left yes sir All right this view right here yes sir okay you would be walking this way to okay. get to the McDonald's side of the store. And when Miss Brown exited the store, she would have to come out that way. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been marked as States Exhibit 19. Would you agree with me that's a, a still sh shot of the front of the store? Yes, sir. And you see Miss Brown in the store? Yes, this? sir. Okay. At this time, your own state would seek to admit States Exhibit 19. Any objection? No. 19 will be in evidence. Thank you. 
Thank you, ma'am. I don't have any questions for you, but the, someone else might, okay? Vince, any questions? No questions, John. All right, it's cool. You're good to go. You can step down. Is she released from her subpoena? Yes, Your Honor. Vince, any objection? No. All right, ma'am. You're free to go, and you're released from your subpoena, okay? <coughs> Thank, Thank you. you very much. Dr. Lawyers at the bench briefly. We're going to go ahead and put your notes away. We'll give you back your cell phones. We're going to let you go to lunch. We'll have you come back downstairs in the jury pool room at 1.45. Um, it's now 12.35, so maybe an hour and 10 minutes. Uh, again, no texting, tweeting, blogging, looking at, talking about the case. And we'll see you back after lunch, okay? All right, anything we need to address before lunch? No? All right, we'll see you all back at 145.